you're if you're considering selling or or uh, are a seller. Um, first of all, uh, get somebody to refer you. I have a link if you want a seller link to get in quickly, and you can use that. I also have a link if you want to shop on it, and it pretty much pays for your first order. Um, if you go on some of these people on the first lives where they sell everything for a dollar, um, it'll cover your shipping and your dollar items. But anyway, um, don't sell anything for a dollar on whatnot because all you're going to get paid is about 30 cents for each dollar sale. The fees are just like eBay. And don't think they're not. You better read the fine print for all the different little fees because it's equivalent to eBay. But it does sell faster than eBay. And a lot of times it's a little bit cheaper than eBay for the customer to buy on whatnot. Um, just remember, if you list it for a dollar, you're only getting 30 cents for that sale. Um, so my advice to you is don't list anything for a dollar. Either combine it with some other items or sell it for at least $2.00. That way you'll make 60 cents on the sale. Um, anything under 16 ounces, one pound, you have to buy your own packaging. Um, because that's the way they do it. Um, otherwise, one pound and over is going to go priority. No flat rate boxes, no flat rate envelopes. You have to get regular priority, not the A, not the B zone, any of that. Just priority boxes that are free priority envelopes that are free at the post office okay um but don't get flat rate or anything this is a b zone or anything like that um and um uh, all your shipping is done through the website um once you figure it out which i did a vlog on it um then it's not too hard because really the hardest thing of all is just figuring out how to ship it on their website um just remember this. Click on the numbers. The blue numbers, there's like eight of them next to customer's name and orders. There's a row of blue numbers. And it'll automatically bundle all the same orders for one customer. You can unbundle it or you can do them all separate, whatever. It's better for your pay. If you can bundle it, you get a higher payout from them or higher paycheck from whatnot if it's bundled so just make sure before you click to print the label that you have the proper box you can go in there when you click on those blue numbers you can go in there and adjust the size of the, the, the box or the envelope you're using and you can weigh it right there on the spot but it's better to be able to get an idea of what it's going to weigh before you sell it so go get a scale for 30 bucks at Walmart or at Sam's Club or at a secondhand store. I've got three of them. I've got a commercial weight scale like you use in a deli. I also have a bathroom scale that's digital. And I also have a digital jeweler scale. Um, so I can do pounds or grams or ounces on there. But anyway. And, and the best thing to do is, is you know, weigh it before you list it. Customers can pre-bid. So it's really a plus if you number all your uh, items in your listings on that sale. And you put it one picture with it because they can pre-bid before the auction. Don't list more than 20 items per auction. I'm telling you. You'll be so sorry. Really. It's so hard to pull up on the roll call. I have to, if the site's going crazy because there's too many people on it, um, it's going to mess you all up. Uh, and, and if you're not getting any sales, it'll drive you just absolutely berserk. You know, if you list more than 20 items. So don't do it. And, you, and if you sell all 20 items, you don't want to pack any more than 20 items. So, um, really, just list 20 items per show till you get good and professional enough to be able to ship out 20 items at a time. 
You have to ship within two days now. There's no more three days. It's two days. Um, and, and if you can ship out that day, you get really high ratings. Okay? That's the thing to do. Yes, you can print them out in a regular office or home printer. You can also buy a printer like you use for eBay or Amazon. Um, you can order one at Amazon's a good place to order them. Um, you can go to Office Depot. Um, sometimes they have them in store. And uh, poly mailers, the best place to get them is on Amazon in bulk. Okay? And if you order from the Orient, it's going to take 30 days for it to get to you. So don't order any from the Orient unless you want to wait 30 days. So make sure to find out where it's being shipped from. Um, but poly mailers is a real good thing about gallon size is a good one. Gallon and two gallon are real good because you've got to have your own shipping supplies for anything under one pound or 16 ounces. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, so, you, you know, you'll probably want some of those little poly mailers. Other than that, you can find little boxes in the trash. Um, good places to go are cell phone places for little boxes. Um, and then for bigger boxes, like for shoes and stuff, go to a place like Cox Cable or something. You can look in their trash can. And you'll find some really nice heavy-duty boxes to ship shoes in. Um, they're perfect size. And... Um, um, Let's see. Don't list more than 20 items per show. Make sure to list a lot of shows. And even if you don't, if you're not sure you're going to be able to do it or not, just do one, one for every day. And even if it's a month ahead of time, just do one for every day and put a title in it. And then when you get time, you can go ahead and start listing stuff up on it. The quicker you do put your listings up on it, though, the better off you're going to be. Don't try to just sell and make a listing as you go. Because people aren't going to wait around for that. Um, when If you have something you have to describe a lot, it's better to describe it before you start the auction for that item. Okay? Um, you know, unless you're going to do like a reseller box, then go ahead and make it a five-minute bid. And you can start pulling stuff out and showing it as the people are bidding. Other than that, if it's like a one or two item thing, um, I would suggest starting with one minute bids uh, <coughs> <excuse me coughs> until you get really good. <coughs> then go to 45 second bids and then go to 30 second bids. I wouldn't go any shorter than that because you don't have enough time to let other people jump in and bid and, and raise it up. And the more subscribers you can get to your store on whatnot, the better off you're going to be. Because, and especially if you put, you know, advanced shows up. And title the show of what the subject matter is. If it's going to be kid stuff or youth shoes or men's stuff or women's stuff or crafts or whatever, just, you know, one show for each subject matter. If you're going to do, you know, DVD movies, make one show. Okay, 20 items. And predate it, you know, and just do a whole bunch of them, 20 or 30 shows there. You can always go in there and change the time or the date. And if you want to go ahead and run it early, you can run it early. And you can also copy items from that stream after you run that show. You can go back and book another show, and you can go back and copy all the items from that show you already did onto the new show. And um, you can delete ones you don't want to have on there or whatever, and, and you can change pictures and descriptions and prices. And always put a starting bid in your description. That way you get rid of the people that are hanging around that are only going to be there to get the freebie stuff. I'm not doing any freebies. The only ones that are going to get freebies are people that buy from me. And and um, people that buy a lot from me, I'll throw a little freebie thing in there. You know, when I ship it. But um, I, I'm not... You get like 10, 20 people jump in on your stream because they're waiting around for the free gifts. And they don't want to buy anything. 
And um, sorry, but I'm not sorry. So I don't, I don't do any giveaways. Sorry, I'm just not because I, I don't want to give anything away to somebody that's not buying from me. You know, it's not worth it to me because on your giveaways you pay the shipping and make sure you got it registered to the United States or wherever you're at. Um, mine's all U.S. only, so I'm not shipping any overseas. So if I were to do a giveaway, I wouldn't have to pay shipping overseas because it's like $35 for a piece of blush makeup. Okay? One piece to ship overseas to Europe. Forget it. I'm not paying it. So, um, but, uh, 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 I'm telling you, I'm giving you fair warning. Do not list more than 20 items in your auction at a time per auction because you just don't want to mess with it. It's going to be just too much for you. Um, and uh, uh, you can list as many shows as you want. You know, you can do a show. Really, it's good to do at least two shows a day if you could do three. Like one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one in the evening. Um, it runs 24 hours, so whatever you want to do. I mean, I know people are doing shows 2, 3, 4 in the morning. And they're doing good. I think they're getting all the drunks because people just buy away on there. Um, the customers do have the option to cancel their bid. So you want to wait and make sure before you ship that their payment clears and that um, uh, you'll see it on your souls. And that uh, they haven't canceled the item. Because um, they do have that option to cancel it before you ship. Um, and, uh, uh, I mean, it's okay. It's really hard for them to return stuff, though. But remember to be honest with your auction. Really honest. Because um, they can give you a bad rating. It may be hard for them to return it, but by God, you don't want a bad rating. So, um, yeah. So, uh, but all in all, it's the new wave right now. There's a lot of eBayers that are just saying, forget it. I'm going on whatnot. Um, just bear in mind, it's a little bit cheaper till you get a lot of subs. And, I mean, in three months, you can have 4,000 subs. Okay? Um, it doesn't take long at all. All you have to do is show up to work. That's it. Show up to work. And you don't have to play music. You don't have to do giveaways. You don't have to show yourself on the camera if you don't want to. Um, it's real simple. It's not scary at all. And when you put your first live in your title for your first show, all kinds of people will be there to help you. All you got to do is ask for their help while you're live. They will help you. But do list in advance all your items. Do take a picture of each item. One, you need the picture so that you know what you're shipping. Two, you need a number of the item so you know what they bought. And also use some sticky papers, sticky notes, and a permanent marker. And as soon as that item sells, write down the item number, number three, you know, and stick it on that product and put it to the side. Have a laundry basket or a table, whatever it takes. When you're selling, make sure all your stuff is in order. So you're not digging for it, looking for it, dropping it in the floor, looking in the box, any of that kind of Mickey Mouse stuff. Because um, you're going to be a mess if you got to be digging around and stuff because people will leave. They like the auctions, you know, boom, 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 one after another. And um, pay attention to any questions. And instead of pulling up, like somebody say, can you run 4, 12, and 15? Just tell them to go ahead and go ahead and pre-bid till you get to that one to run it. So you're welcome to go ahead and pre-bid. Don't worry. I'll be running it today. It's in the roll call in my store. Click the little house icon on there on the right. And look in my store. And, you know, it'll say pre-bid. And, and then you just tell them, okay, just go ahead and pre-bid on those items and whatever the maxes you want to pay. And you don't have to worry about it. 
if you've got to go pick up your kids or have lunch or whatever, you can leave it safely and and probably win um, the item. You know, um, but let them go ahead and pre-bid um, so that it'll already come up when you go to run that item. Their bid's already showing up on there, and anybody bids against it, it'll keep running that price up. So that's a real good plus. That means it's a guaranteed sale. So, um, you know, do push the pre-bid auction onto the people. So, you know, if you see something in the store, go ahead and pre-bid on it so you don't miss out in case you have to go. Um, the site does go down sometimes. When it's really overloaded, it will go down. And it flips in and out. Sometimes you have to back out, go back into your show. Um, and I've, I've done it five times in one show because it, it goes in and out. No matter how good your signal is. If you have Wi-Fi, make sure everything else is off your Wi-Fi so that you can run your show. You run it from your phone. You don't need cameras. You don't need laptops with, with webcam or any of that crap. Um, just run it off your phone. Now, the nicest part when you're doing whatnot is if you can run your laptop so you can read questions and answer them. Um, and then use your phone for the auction. The camera will adjust in and out, so sometimes you've got to move your tripod. Go get, go to Walmart, get a nice tripod. I got reviews on tripods on here on my channel. Get you a nice tripod. Sometimes you can get them a secondhand store for five or ten bucks. Um, but uh, um, tripod is a definite plus. Uh, and uh, just make sure you got your stuff in order. If you're doing clothes, I think the grossest thing I've seen is people that. I saw a girl the other day that was selling children's clothes. And she was sitting on the bed in a bedroom with two big rubber made totes with the lids off with piles of clothes in there, not folded or anything, all wrinkled up, nasty. I don't even know if they're clean. And was pulling them out, going, okay, how about this? And that's just nasty. Go get some hangers. Go to the Dollar Tree, buy hangers. Go to a, a, a retail store and say, hey, you guys got any hangers you're going to throw away? Or look in their trash can. You'd be surprised how many really nice commercial hangers you can get free without having to buy them. And go buy yourself a rack for about 20 bucks at Walmart. I'll take you 10 minutes put that sucker together. And put that rolling feet on it, too, so you can roll that rack around. Because when you're done with it, you can push it back. And you can rerun it the next time. And, um, but definitely get a rack. Hang the stuff the night before, and it'll all be nice and neat and not wrinkly tomorrow. Right, do 20 items at a time. And remember, all your supplies are tax write off for your business. Keep your receipts. So you buy a rack, tax write off. You buy rubber bands, tax write off. You buy sticky notes, tax write off. You buy pens, tax write off. Shipping supplies, tax write off. All this stuff's tax write off. Okay? Your internet's tax right off. Your phone's a tax right off because it's your tool. Okay, So even your laptop's a tax right off. So you'd be buying a new laptop soon. You know, um, it's a tax right off. It's a for work. So yeah, um, but that's the best I can tell you. There's a lot of people who sell stuff for a dollar and it's just worthless. Hey, hey, how you doing? I'm telling you. And it's just, all you'll get is dollar people, and you don't want just dollar people. But there's a lot of people doing it because they don't know any better. They don't realize it's only 30 cents as a seller you're going to get paid per item if you run it for a dollar. And to me, it's not worth my time to sell an item for one dollar and have to go pack it up and drive down the post office, ship it out. It's not worth it to me. <coughs> Thank you for the thumbs up, but... But yeah, but I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of resellers that buy on there, and they get stuff dirt cheap because people sell it for a dollar, thinking they're gonna make millions of dollars. You won't do that until you get a good following, and it, it takes time. But it's short time. It's not like eBay, it or, you know or YouTube. It is super fast. I mean, you can have four thousand subs on whatnot in three to four months, easy, just by running shows. And I'm talking about running it at least one a day minimum. If you can run three a day, you're banging. If you can run two a day, 
you're doing great. And if you can do it seven days a week, you'll you'll get your stuff really quick. Really, really quick. Because the more subs you have, the more people will bid. So if you have, you know, a thousand subs, you know, people will bid away on your stuff. If you've only got a hundred subs, you know, maybe five people will show up to your auction. Okay? Not counting the new people. That just happen to see it live. That's how you get subs too. Is when people see it on the live. If they like your stuff. They like you. I don't play loud music. I'm not getting in trouble with ASCAP for music. I just see that already coming. I'm not doing it. Um, I have a lot of people that like to come to my shows. Because I'm not you know, yelling and screaming. And playing loud music. And the music comes across really bad. On what not as a seller. If you go to people's shows and music is absolutely terrible. It's either too loud or it's too choppy. Um, it, it does, doesn't even sound good, you know? So, um, I, I don't run any music at all. I'm not doing it. I'd rather talk to the people, visit with people, say hi, you know, um, and welcome them in. Always, every time you get somebody that shows up at your show, always call their name out. Say hi, Ready Roulette. How you doing? Back. Sorry, it messed up the screen. I went back and I had to come back. <laughs> yeah, the internet's going crazy right now. Because if you've got anything like T-Mobile, Elon Musk and T-Mobile have paired together. And so they're sharing Starlink. Elon Musk is sharing Starlink with T-Mobile. So guess who's going to be banking? And T-Mobile just bought Sprint. Which was a good thing. Sprint was a loser from word go. From way back, Sprint was one of the worst, scammiest billing. I knew people that had Sprint. I never did, but I knew a lot of people that had it, and they were burned so bad when Sprint was, came out. But um, that's back when you used to have to pay for the minutes. But, um, but yeah, um, it's a really interesting site. I don't know how long it, it'll last, but now they're letting all kinds of sellers in there. Um, and, uh, uh, I mean, if you're into Pokemon and card stuff and Legos, there's a bazillion sellers like that on there. And, I mean, they do real well. I just, I'm not into all that stuff. Um, I've tried to run baseball cards on there. I've tried to do them, you know, for a dollar each. I've tried to do them for two dollars for two for 1990s baseball cards, and I have not sold one on there at all. So, I'm not a big fan of doing baseball cards at all. Actually, I'm giving them away one at a time in my shipments. Who joined it and does the magic gathering? Oh, that's fun. Yeah, um, uh, you know, you can sell just about anything on there. Um, but uh, the reason they like big YouTubers is because they want all their subs to come over to whatnot and buy. So, that's what they're trying to do is get a lot of buyers on there. So that's why they'll hustle the big YouTubers because they have so many subs that it's really worth it for them to let them on. But now they're starting to just let a lot of people in. But it can take forever to get on there unless, you know, you're referred by another seller. So if you want to take and use my referral link as a seller, you're welcome to. You'll get in way fast. I mean way fast. And give them one good picture. Take a bunch of stuff, lay it out on a big table, long table, or a counter in your bathroom, and take one picture of all this stuff right there. Boom. All laid out like you get ready to do, you know, yard sale or something. And um, they like that a lot. They want sellers that aren't going to run out of inventory. And this is something I'm not going to run out of. I've got so much inventory, I could stock three stores. And, um, um, due to the recent events, I didn't get to open my retail store. Um, it just cost me so much money. It cost me like $2,000 to make this move um, when I got illegally evicted by American Storage in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. That's right. Um, but that's another lawsuit going. Actually, two lawsuits. One on the illegal eviction and the other one on the physical damage. But anyway. So... Um, it's interesting opportunity, um, but um, like I said, I don't know how long it lasts. No, I don't play any music, and I just run an auction. And 
what I do with my first item, I run it for two minutes till people get into the room. And then I'll run it again for one minute auction. And then all the auctions after that, I'll run for 45 seconds or 30 seconds. 30 seconds is the longest I go. It is, uh, oh yeah, it's sickening, but you know, people reap what they sow. They just do. That's just life. When you do bad things to people, bad things come back to you because you brought that on yourself. And I'm not saying I'm doing anything. I'm just saying that, you know, if you're a kind soul and you have a good heart, usually when you do good things for people, good things come back. But if you're evil, that stuff follows you for life. It just does. It just, you know, it's just, it's like, you know, investing in bad luck. It's not worth it. It just isn't. I've seen so many evil people that didn't do well in life because they were just evil. You try to be a good person with a good heart. So many more wonderful things happen to you in life. You know, and business is business. Do it legal or don't do it at all. Um, yeah. It's, it's just the way it is, you know. Um, you know, when you work for other people, you have to do what you're supposed to do and do stuff that's legal. Otherwise, you need to work for yourself. And you can argue with yourself. Oh, yeah, sorry. yeah, um, it's been a little while since I've had a retail store. And I was kind of excited about it. And I had a really good opportunity. But I could not pay to move everything into storages immediately. But this storage complex, that storage complex, this storage complex. Because I couldn't get them all together. Um, I just did them one at a time. As I needed them, and um, uh, you know, and then that, that cost of the U-Haul and um, trying to pay people too a little bit of money, and the people I didn't get to pay, that you know, I'm still going to have to pay when I get the money. I want to pay them. They didn't ask for anything, but I want, I still want to pay them. I don't like anybody doing anything for free for me. I'm just that way. Um, but. Uh, um, you know, it's like borrowing money, you, you want to pay it back, you know. Um, but yeah, so um, it just was too costly to try to do all that and then turn around and move it all again. I was just so exhausted and it put me in the hospital. I've been back three times already and I'm just, just so done. And I still don't feel good. I'm still not doing that great. Today I'm not using a cane. That's a good thing. I don't know how long that'll last, but anyway. Um, so, yeah, it was just too costly for me to try to make that move again right away. And it would have been so much cheaper if I'd have got into my retail store because that was, I was opting for a small one, which was 1K square foot, which all my storages in my office, I was just under 600 square foot. So 1K, I'd have been banking. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of sad. And now, it took three months to get all my paperwork done and my licensing and everything. But in the meantime, I could run it as an office. Yeah. But then again, maybe some things are meant to be. Because I would have had to sign a one-year lease. He really wanted a one-year lease. And I'll do a vlog of it and show you guys the store that I was going to get. It was really a pretty storefront. The mirror top is really neat. I would have loved to have my marquee on the top there. Oh. But, um, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I can always do it again. It's not a problem. It's there. Um, I can do a bigger store. Um, you know, it's not like it's going away. Um, but then again, you know, I don't know that I want to commit to this area anyway. Um, it might have been, you know, a blessing in disguise. Um, because I, you know, can't say I want to live here again right now. Um, I'm just not decided yet. I've got to get really good, steady stream of income. Um... And then once I get to that point again, then, you know, I can make a decision from there where I want to be. 
everything here right now is about 2k per bedroom to rent for residential um uh, yeah gas is going down though gas is better price right now so that's really good but um yeah so i don't know but in the meantime i'm rolling on ebay and my macari i got a sale the other day and i canceled it because some of that stuff was still in my office and i didn't get to move it um there's a lot of stuff left behind in my office it was a shame um and then um uh but Macari, that's like, I think the first sale in like six months that I've ever had on Macari. What it, what it did. I have all cheap stuff on Macari. I mean, really cheap. <laughs> um, like that was, I think that was like a $3 item with free shipping <laughs> or something like that. And it was first sale. I was like, oh, please. And then, um, uh, I've got my eBay, and I haven't redone my website yet. I haven't had time to do that. You aren't lying, man. I'll tell you, you never want to have to be boondocking in your car. Never in your life. You, I don't care. There's one cat, guy that, that I talked to that's young, and he's like, I love it, man. I got my stuff in a storage unit on racks, all my clothes and stuff, and I just go in there and pick out what I need for the day. Go to the gym, get a shower, have a ten dollar a month membership, and and take a shower every day, and um, you know, uh, uh, I just been docking my car, don't pay any rent. Oh hell no! It is not fun. It is scary. It is not safe. You really learn what it's like to be a car in a parking lot when you boom docking in the car. There are people doing some crazy stuff around your car. Okay, trust me. Um, from whooping it out and peeing right next to your car, banging on your doors with their doors in the middle of the night, drunk, two people fighting. The more I've had uh, is fights around my car when people are drunk late at night. They will pull up right next to your car and be beating on each other like only feet from your car and screaming and yelling in the middle of the night. And I have had to literally call the sheriffs. It's like you're not even at home. You're in your car. And you have to call the sheriffs on people that are going crazy because they're scared they're going to pull a gun out now. And they're bouncing around like they're going to hit your car. And and um, you just want them to stop. It's like scary, you know. And you don't want to like roll the window down or jump out or go, hey, quit it, you know. You don't want to get involved with stuff like that. So, no, it's a horrible, horrible life. Pee in a cup is not fun. You know, you can't wash your hands any second of the day. Um, it's hot. It's cold. Um, it's scary, it's dark, and you can blind yourself from the lights in the parking lot. Um, you have to be really careful when you try to go to sleep because it will burn your eyes. It will ruin your eyes, your eyesight. Um, yeah, there's just so much. And gas is expensive. It is not cheap, boom docking in a car. Gas, food, everything, it is not. Oh, no, my daughter and I used to travel a lot. And and every once in a while, we'd stay at, you know, real safe truck stops like Flying J or something. You know, and they have security or sheriffs there, you know, and we'd stay the night, you know, at our travels or something like that. When it was late and I just couldn't drive anymore, I was too tired. I'd try to drive straight through and I couldn't. And, you know, a sleepy driver is more dangerous than a drunk driver. So you really don't want to be on the road sleepy. Um, but, you know, we had done it on occasion, but, I mean, like, when we go to NOLA, I always had comps for sweets and stuff in Biloxi at the casinos and stuff, free comps for food, like $100 in food, and we'd stay, we'd stay at the casino in a really nice penthouse or something on the way down for a day or two, and then we'd go work at NOLA for a couple days or a week or two weeks, however long it lasted for the money, and then when we're ready to go, we go. And then on the way back, we go hit the casinos again and get free rooms and food and all that crap. And and most of the time, we just hang out in the room or go to the gym or the spa or whatever or the pools. Um, it was always a blast, always a blast. She was the best to travel with. Um, I, I really, out of all my kids, she was the ideal best to travel with. 
too much fun. And we went to something really elegant. She was great at dressing and doing her hair and all that stuff. And sometimes I'd help her with her face. And we just, we always had a blast when we traveled. And, you know, it was for work, you know, but, you know, it was nice to have company because there was a lot of years, years ago, where I didn't have any kids to go with me. And um, there were so many neat things on the road that I would have liked to have, you know, done, you know, or shared with, you know, my kids, you know, that you drive by, you see a big fun park, you go, man, I wish my kid was with me, you know, or, you know, you go by a really cool restaurant and you say, man, I wish my kid was with me, you know, and so you obviously don't want to go yourself because it's worthless if you don't have somebody to share it with, so, um, uh, my youngest girl, her daddy, George, um, he ended up running costumes with me. He left Sears after like 20 years. And then, you know, we would go on the road and run costumes together. And I put him in one club. I'd go work the next. And we traveled all over the States. And uh, he would wear a suit and everything. He was real professional and all that. And a lot of the girls just adored him, you know. And um, it was great because, you know, two clubs were doing real well at the same time. He could be at one, I'd be at the other, and we were back and forth on the phone. Like, how are you doing? How's your sales? Are you doing any good? Or, I think I'll go down to this other place, or come pick me up now, that kind of thing. Yeah, I, um, uh, no, I wouldn't, I would never want to be boondocking in my car with my daughter for a living. You know what I mean? I would, I would have to have given her to, you know, her dad. Um, as a matter of fact, before she left, I had, I had mentioned several times about her moving in with her dad because she was getting very hard for me to handle. And, um, uh, you know, I was afraid I was going to have a heart attack. Uh, it was just a lot, a lot of stress, you know. And he was like, oh, you know, this teenager. It's like, I don't care, you know? Hey, hey, what's going on, Roxanne? But, um, but, uh, um, I think there's some other things involved there that it made her turn for the bad. But, uh, thank you for the thumbs up. But, yeah, no, it's not any good life to live being docking in a car, trust me. It's absolutely the worst life you'll ever live. I don't find it fun in any way. I don't care what anybody says. And whether you're doing it for a hobby or traveling around the world, whatever you think you're doing. It is not a happy life. It is not a safe life. It's a very dangerous life. That's why a lot of people get killed. They go, well, I'll just travel around the, the world in my car. I'll just give up my apartment, put everything in storage, and take a dog with me and just travel around. And that's how you get handcuffed and arrested because there's a lot of places that it's illegal to sleep in your car. Not every RV park will let you park a car in there. Okay? Um, you know... Uh, and an and, and RV, if you have an RV, the worst part about is paying to park it overnight, you know, or for any amount of time. I know a guy right now that has a, a nice RV in the bar that he owns. And he also owns a really nice house in the bar, him and his wife. And um, he just uses that for, like, relatives. I'm like, you got an Airbnb? And he's like, no. He uses it for relatives or friends that come in town and let them stay there, you know, when they visit. But that's about it. But he said they just jacked his rent, his lot rent, and he owns an RV thing um, out there in the bar. And he said it, it, they just jacked it up. And he was paying like um, 400 hiccup thing a month. And it just went to like 1200 a month. A month. But that's how high they raised it. And he's like, my gosh, you know. So, um, that's the biggest thing about having an RV and then the gas. They get like four miles of the gallon. You have that kind of money. Um, they had the bus boys that were down here that camped out at Planet Fitness for about two weeks, right? They're on, um, 
yeah, they're, they're on a um, um, TikTok, Bus Boys, it's B-O-Y-Z, and um, they're two brothers, yeah, there's two brothers that, that redid a little shorty van, school van, school bus van thing, and painted it baby blue, and they're traveling all over the states, and they stayed over here at Planet Fitness for like two weeks, I'm telling them, I said, be careful, because the sheriffs will toss you right out of here, um, Although Inspirational Nomad put that big thing of how he lived at Planet Fitness for five years in Tampa area. Well, good luck. But I think Planet Fitness is a little pissed off, you know, with that vlog. Because I think everybody's now thinking they can live at Planet Fitness. Um, thank God I never had to live at Planet Fitness. Um, but then again, you know, it's not the best area of the one that's here. Um, but... Um, you know, I'm sure there's others that are better, maybe. Um, I'm not a big, big person of Planet Fitness. I, I was always mad because they never took PayPal. I thought that was the dumbest thing in the world. What big business doesn't take PayPal? But there's ways to get around that. You know, if you use um, um, the PayPal um, banking number, which is Wells Fargo, um, uh, for your direct deposit, if you list that on there, it'll work. If you use a Bluebird card from Walmart, a Bluebird American Express, that banking number for um, direct deposit will also work. Otherwise, you're going to have a real brick-and-mortar bank, period. And then the problem is they go wacko on your account. They charge me four times in one month. But, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's um, it's kind of problematic because the um, the um, where you do the uh, uh, water massage and all that other stuff, there's idiots that walk in there and they're talking and everything else. People just wandering in there, and it's just not a very relaxing atmosphere because they'll have all these employees there and they don't watch the gym, and it's just aggravating. I went in there one night and they were smoking weed in there, and I went in another night and they were smoking cherry cigars in there. And it was like, it's a gym. You know? It's a gym. <laughs> Crazy crap goes on. But yeah, so, um, uh, yeah. But other than that, it is boiling hot right now. And there's kind of getting to be a breeze. I made it through August so far alive. I did not think I would survive August. I was sure I was going to be dead. No lie. I did not think I would make it this year in the car. And I am still alive today so far. The hottest month of the year. I mean, of course, yes, I had an option to leave and, you know, go north somewhere. Um, uh, you know, which I didn't. And with all that moving and all that stuff, visiting Memphis, but I had that experience somewhere. Airbnb, but it was professional. Yeah. Um. Uh, you'd been better off to go to Tunica and go get a hotel in Tunica at one of the casinos. It's cheaper. And you get all the luxuries. That's what I always did. And um, you'd be surprised at really cheap deals in Tunica. Any update on the old place? No, I can't discuss a lot of it because um, I'm going through the lawyer thing right now. So I'm trying to uh, be careful what I say on here. So, um, at this point, and, uh, um, but it's getting interesting. <laughs> but other than that, I lost a lot of stuff in my office. Really good, you know. But I also didn't want to do anything illegal, you know. She put nine days on that eviction, which was not legal in the state of Florida. And I followed it basically to the T. And it's just unfortunate I didn't get to get all my stuff out. And I didn't get to, like, sweep the floor and all those nice things. Even though it was nasty poo-poo when they gave it to me. I mean, literally. I was so nasty when they gave it to me. It smelled like weed. The, the floor was so nasty. It had dog hair all over it. And uh, um, it had um, uh, sheetrock mud all over it because it had flooded in there. And they didn't clean that up. Fridge wasn't cooling nothing. 
that, um, but yeah, so anyway, anyway, I've got to get rocking and rolling, and, um, I just like go by Planet Fitness and do that vlog as soon as I got a chance. I felt so sorry for the people that I know that have been, you know, like, living there forever. Um, two people, and they, they tried to even go back and stay again, figuring it was a one-night deal with the sheriffs, but it wasn't. Man, that would scare the devil out of me. If the sheriffs banged on my windows, I swear that would freak me out. I have not had that happen, but, you know, um, uh, I guess it's because I'm not one of those that goes to the same place all the time, parks in the same spot, and, and makes a big scene, and, you know, screwballs around, and plays the stereo loud, and is arguing in the parking lot with people, and creeping around and doing stupid stuff. Um, I don't do any of that. You know, I keep my car immaculate clean, um, and I don't, I don't look homeless, I don't act homeless, and wherever I go, I do spend money where I go. So, you know, I do business with people, you know, because it's a courtesy, you know. So, you want to respect where you stay. It's just like staying at truck stops. When you stay the night at the truck stop, go in there and make a purchase, you know. It's all about doing business. In the South, you learn that. Do business with people you like. Do business with people that do business with you. It's a Southern thing, although not Southern. It's just something you learn when you move to the South in California. It's a respectful thing. If you do business with the people, they will always welcome you. Um, as a matter of fact, I had a truck stop out by Huntsville where sheriff used to come in and jack with everybody late at night and bang on their window and go, what are you doing? It's like, well, you saw I was sleeping in the front seat of the car. And it is a truck stop and a car stop, it says on the sign. And and gave me all kinds of hard time. He did it, he did it three times in three different vehicles that I had. Three different vehicles. And I went to the owner of the truck stop, and he's like, I'll call the sheriffs because they better not mess with you. And why? Because I spent $30 a day in his truck stop every day between food, buying stuff out of the gift shop. And they loved me when I would come into town. As a matter of fact, I called them on my way down, coming from Memphis or something. And I'd say, hey, you know, I'm coming into town. I hope you'll have my, my root beer float ready when I get there. I knew all the waitresses there, everybody. And they're like, oh, well, we can't wait to see you. And I was like, yeah, I'll be there the next 24 hours or I'll be there in six hours. I'll see you when I get there before I get ready to go to work, you know. And so, you know, it, um, that's about the only time I've ever really had any problems. Otherwise, you know, any truck stop that I go to, I go in and I, you know, get something in the restaurant and I tell the waitress, there's my car. I'm not a lot lizard. I'm a licensed business. I only come here to work. Keep an eye on me. Make sure the truckers don't think, you know, I'm a trick out there. Okay? Because they will scare me if they're, like, creeping around my car or banging on the window. Because um, there are some stupid truckers that think they can just find tricks in the parking lot. I'm not that. I've always made too good of money to ever have to do that. So, and if I sold it, I'd sell it for a bazillion bucks and they would not change back anyway. So, you know what I mean? Anyway, I gotta get going. I'm burning up hot right now. Oh, it is super hot. Almost like it's gonna rain. Um, anyway, I hope you guys had a great one. Sorry, I've been really sick and not doing too well. Um, the move really did me in physically bad. Really bad. I mean, I don't go to the hospital unless it's like a massive thing. I'm, I'm not a big fan of doctors or hospitals, but um, yeah. So, I try to keep you guys, you know, alerted on everything, what's going on. Me too! Oh my gosh, at least today is no cane, thank God, yay. I was really scared of that, it really did some damage to me, it was just way too much, way too much. And, um, you know, very upsetting, other, other than the fact of the money it, it cost, it was just gigantic money to move that fast, to try to give it, there's no possible way to get everything moved that quick. Um, because I had to do it virtually by myself, okay? Yeah, it was just really a short order. It was horrible. Um, and it made me sad because I was just getting ready. Within the next seven days of getting my storefront. And then just start moving everything over gradually. 
you know, in the next 30 days, give them notice and all that stuff and, and open my retail store. But it didn't happen that way. So, but like I say, sometimes things are meant to be. Maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe there's a reason I didn't need to put my John Hancock on a one-year lease because the guy wanted a one-year. And I said, can we do month-to-month? -month? He's like, no, one year. And, and I mean, one year can go by quick or it can go by a long time or it can not work out. Who knows? Um, and in the meantime, I'm, I'm at huge money right now. Huge, huge, huge. But it's okay. I still work every day so far. You know, um, I will continue to be my everyday working you now. Um, and uh, I got to get caught up for all the time that I've lost, you know, from all this. So, um, yeah, and my knee is really bad, messed up for crawling in that office. I mean, really bad. It is not good. Not good at all. It is really bad. I'm so mad. Um, and anyway, I hope you guys have a great one. I love you. Thanks for dropping by. And I'll see you in the next one. I love you. Do something kind for a stranger.